Hello and welcome to part 2 of this KD video series. If you haven't seen part 1, I encourage you to check it out. It goes over what the dissociation constant KD is and how it is derived. This information is vital in order to understand what we will be covering in this video. Essentially, we will be covering the fundamentals of what a binding curve is and how it is generated. Following on from this, we will take a look at what makes an inaccurate binding curve and how to avoid making these. So let's take a look at the science behind a binding curve. In order to generate a binding curve for a given protein ligand pair, a titration experiment is carried out. In this example, one of the protein ligand pair is held at constant concentration. In this case, the ligand. While the protein concentration is changed or titrated, the signal of the system is measured by either an increase or decrease of a quantifiable signal. For example, a change in the light absorbance or fluorescence. From this experiment, the data is then plotted onto a graph. This is a fraction bound plot. Here, the fraction of the ligand bound to the protein is plotted against the total concentration of the protein. At the beginning of this titration, there is only ligand. As protein is added to the system, the proportion of ligand bound to protein increases until saturation, when all of the ligand in the system is bound to the protein. The concentration at which half the ligand is bound is the KD value. When choosing concentrations of protein and ligand, your concentration of ligand should be relatively small. However, your concentration range of proteins should span one order of magnitude above and below the KD. It is for this reason that the plots you create should be logarithmic rather than linear. Because as you can see in this slide, the detail tends to get lost in the linear plots. It becomes nearly impossible to accurately determine the KD in most cases. So let's say we want to create a binding affinity curve, but we don't know what the KD is for a protein interaction. For this curve, we're going to plot the concentrations of protein that amount to 1 50th, all the way up to 200 times the KD value. By going below and above one order of magnitude of KD, we are able to plot a clear binding curve and determine the KD. In the following set of binding curves, the KD for each curve is higher than the total ligand concentration, which is listed at the top of the graph. As you can see, the binding curves here, while not necessarily reaching plateau, are clearly distinguishable from one another. In other words, the KD value for the binding curve where the KD is 10 micromolar is clearly different to the binding curve where the KD is 1 micromolar. So in this set of binding curves, the KD values for each of them are lower than the total ligand concentration. In other words, the protein concentration we're plotting is far lower than that of the KD. In this set of binding curves, the KD values for each binding curve are lower than the total ligand concentration. So where the curves represent a protein interaction with a KD of 0.1 micromolar or 0.01 micromolar, the curves are very close together. Since these curves are so close and hard to distinguish, the graph presumes that the KD values must be close together, when we know in reality they are not. This illustrates why we should always use the lowest concentration of labelled species, to ensure you get good discrimination for KD values. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you might want to check out part 1 of this video series, where we cover the basics of what KD is and how to calculate it. For more educational content regarding the dissociation constant KD, please check out our website. The link for this is also in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Thanks again and have a great day.